name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the Father, send now your spirit all over the earth. Let the Holy Ghost live in the hearts of all nations, that they may be preserved from the generation, disaster, and war. May the Lady of all nations, the co-redemptrix and mediatrix of all graces, be our advocate. Amen. Ave Maria, gracia plena, Dominus tecum benedita tu mulieribus e benedictu fructu ventri tu Iesus. Sancta Maria Mata Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nocet in ora mortis nostra. Amen. Ave Maria, gracia plena, Dominus tecum benedita tu mulieribus e benedictu fructu ventri tu Iesus. Sancta Maria Mata Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nocet in ora mortis nostra. Amen. Ave Maria, gracia plena, Dominus tecum benedita tu mulieribus e benedictu fructu ventri tu Iesus. Sancta Maria Mata Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nocet in ora mortis nostra. Amen. Welcome listeners. In this video, we will be discussing the miracles of the rosary that has been documented throughout the centuries, at least some of them, which many may not be aware of. We we'll start by taking a message from our Blessed Mother as given to Father Stefano Gobi. The title is The Dragon Will Be Bound. This was given in Florida in the USA on the Feast of the most holy rosary October 7th, 1983. Beloved sons, in the battle which you are engaged every day against Satan and his insidious and dangerous seductions, against the powerful army of evil, as well as the special assistance which the angels of the Lord give you, you need to use a sure and invincible weapon. This weapon is your prayer. With prayer, you can always tear away from the enemy the ground which has been conquered. You can use seedlings of good to sprout in the desert of evil and of sin. Above all, you are able to liberate an immense number of souls from Satan. An immense number of, of souls whom Satan has managed to take prisoner. Prayer has great power and gives rise to chain reactions for good which are more powerful than atomic reactions. The prayer which I love best is the Holy Rosary. Because of this, in my many apparitions, I'm always issuing the invitation to recite it. I unite myself to those who say it. I ask it with motherly concern and anxiety of all. Why is the Holy Rosary so effective? Because it is a simple, humble prayer and forms you spiritually to littleness, gentleness and simplicity of heart. Today, Satan is succeeding in conquering everything with the spirit of pride and rebellion against God and goes in terror of those who follow your heavenly mother along the road of littleness and humility. While this prayer is despised by the great and the proud, it is recited with love and great joy by my little ones, by the poor, the children, the humble, the suffering, and by the very many faithful who have welcomed my invitation. The pride of Satan will be conquered by the humility of little ones and the red dragon will find himself finally humiliated and conquered when I bind him, not using a great chain, but a very fragile cord, that of the Holy Rosary. It is a prayer which you offer together with me when you invite me to pray for you. I listen to your request and unite my voice to yours. I unite my prayer to yours. It is therefore always, it therefore always becomes efficacious because your heavenly mother is so many potent at prayer. When I ask, I always obtain. 
Because Jesus cannot ever say no to anything his mother asks him. It is a prayer which unites the voices of the church and the human race because it is uttered in the name of all and never just in the name of a single person. As you contemplate his mysteries, you come to an understanding of the plan of Jesus, which is traced throughout his life from the incarnation to the fulfillment of his glorious Passover, and thus you penetrate increasingly into the mystery of the redemption, and you enter into an understanding of this mystery of life through your heavenly mother, passing along the way of her heart, arriving at the possession of the immense treasure of the divine and blazing charity of the heart of Christ. In it, you are formed for the perfect glory of the Father through the frequent repetition of the prayer which Jesus taught you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. You are also formed for the perpetual adoration of the Most Holy Trinity with the recitation of the glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost. Your Heavenly Mother asks you today to use the Holy Rosary as the most effective weapon for fighting the great battle under the orders of the woman clothed with the Son. And that's the end of that message given to Father Stefano Gopi, uh, which uh, calls us to recite the rosary, to say the rosary, meditate on his mysteries, and the fact that Jesus cannot say no to his heavenly, to his mother, and the fact too that our heavenly mother prays with us whenever we say the rosary, and that the evil one fears this weapon. It is predicted, it is prophesied in the book of Apocalypse uh, that an angel will bind the dragon with a chain. Now, let me explain to Father Gobi uh, that the chain that will bind this dragon is not an iron chain. It is not a mechanical chain, but the little simple cord of the most holy rosary. How does the rosary, or how has the rosary been able to get this far? From the Immaculate Heart, devotion to the rosary. Every Hail Mary you say, is a devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. In the pressure blood messages, our lady explained that the ocean of the pressure blood of her son dwelt inside her Immaculate Heart. And so by the merit of the passion of our Lord, graces are transmitted whenever we say the rosary, invoking the mediatrix of all God's uh, graces. And it is through this report that the evil one will eventually be conquered personally in our lives, globally for the church, and then triumphantly. Throughout history, we have seen that so many miracles have been wrought through this effective weapon. The miraculous fall of communism in 30 countries, uh, the bringing down of 87 dictators, dictatorships, these have all taken place. Uh, through the powerful, efficacious, powerful and efficacious uh, prayer of the Holy Rosary. Let us look at the, one of the major miracles that have taken place, the miraculous uh, protection from atomic bomb in Hiroshima. During World War II, an atomic bomb was dropped in the town of Hiroshima, Japan, and also in Nagasaki. Everything within a mile was completely destroyed. The only survivors within that one mile radius were eight priests. These eight men, like the eight that survived the great flood, walked away from the atomic blast and lived into old age without radiation, po po without radiation poisoning. In the middle of the devastation, there were eight lone survivor, survi survivors. Yes. Not only did, did they all survive with only relatively minor injuries, 
but they all lived well past that awful day with no radiation sickness, no loss of hearing, or any other visible long-term defects or maladies. Naturally, they were interviewed and examined many times. Father Shifa, a survivor, said over 200 times, he was interviewed by scientists and healthcare people about their remarkable experience. And they said, we believe that we survive because we are living the message of Fatima. We live and pray the rosary daily in that home. And so the rosary said the priests from the atomic bomb in Hiroshima. And why not? Why would this not happen? In Apocalypse 12, we read that the woman is clothed with the sun. The woman is clothed with atomic power. The mass atomic power embedded in the sun is far greater than all the nuclear bombs you can find on this planet. And so this woman is clothed with atomic power. And therefore, the atomic bomb that exploded, uh, that was dropped uh, in Hiroshima, which turned everything uh, within several kilometer radius into pebbles, small, small stones, could not um, do harm or kill this priest who we are always saying their rosary every day. Keep in mind that even the church where Mass is said was also destroyed. It was only this home where this priest stayed and prayed their rosary. The second miracle we want to bring to attention has to do with the guns that fell to rosaries in a bloodless revolution. Starting in Paris, Sister Akariza and 16 other nuns led the rosary as soldiers escort, escorted rolling military tanks with their turrets trained on the sisters. The nuns said, start, st the nuns said staring down those tanks has been the scariest experience of our life. I said, Lord, forgive me for all my sins and even the offenses of our Filipino people. If really the tanks will crush us, at least the two of us, kill us sisters, not the people, because we did not want bloodshed. I love my country. But the tanks stopped, and the soldiers joined the protesters reciting the rosary. And that was a, really a miracle. Sister Alcariza said that God delivered them from the hands of a dictator and saved the country from what would have ultimately provoked a violent reaction. She said she looks back to that time as a source of courage and a reminder to stand for what is right always. Um, that for her was her own miracle of the Rosary, the Chicago Tribune reported, instead of guns, there were prayers, instead of bloodshed, celebrations, instead of casualties, converts. Guns fell uh, to the Rosary in the Philippine Revolu Revolution. May the Holy Rosary deliver a country Nigeria uh, from misrule, uh, from those who practice dictatorship uh, falsified or covered with a mask of democracy. The third, I say man to that, the third, in 1964, an attempted communist takeover in Brazil was thwarted by Rosary uh, Crusade led by women, the women of Brazil. Millions of women prayed to stop a communist takeover in 1964. Their prayers were answered for that. Piton was also instrumental in stopping that takeover in Brazil. Even the CIA recognized the power of praying the rosary. The United States government recognized the positive impact brought to Latin America by the crusades, by the crusades of the rosary priests. And for a time, he received funding from the CIA, although they are in the, in the locations. The CIA did not interfere with the content. The Rosary Rallies drew millions, including this last. In 1992, 
when at Manila, Philippines, the two million attendees became part of a groundswell to overthrow the dictatorship of Ferdinand Marcos. Pray, the documentary is a gift for our times. A movie was released uh, sometime about that remarkable period in history. The next one, two men from the same family were saved from death because of a rosary in two different wars. Private Glenn Houghton bent down to pick up his rosary that has fallen off his neck, a move that alerted him that he has stepped on a landmine in Afghanistan. He stood still where he was for 45 minutes while his colleagues diffused the mine. He wasn't the first one in his family to narrowly escape death because of rosary. Glenn's great-grandfather, uh, Joseph Sonny Truman, also credited a rosary with saving his life when a bomb blast ahead of him missed him by a hair because he stopped to pick up a rosary he saw on the ground. The next one, how the rosary saved a young man uh, from Ted Bundy. The rosary isn't just for Catholics, Protestants, uh, some protesters also prayed. One protestant who shared how he learned to love praying the rosary, who was worried that the rosary skewed the role of Mary, uh, but learned that it is actually Christ-centered. I thought I knew the basis of Catholicism, and I thought I knew about the rosary. What I thought I knew made it seem foreign and complicated, but I knew about it nonetheless. When I actually read and learned about it, I was shocked by the incredible power of what I found. It turns out that the practice of the rosary is like a complete Bible study on a necklace. When I learned this, it blew my mind. When I realized that I've been so skeptical of the rosary, I know in my internet that Catholics don't worship Mary, but I worried that the rosary somehow skewed the role of Mary and placed upon her too much emphasis. I was wrong. Forgive me because the rosary is awesome. And the rosary is firmly and rightly Christ-centered. How this protestant came to love the rosary. The rosary is a, a prayer devotion that focuses on Jesus' life and ministry. It has been called the gospel on a string. Scripture says, yeah, to take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, uh, which is the Word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all different kinds of prayers and requests. The rosary focuses on the Word of God, Jesus Himself. He is the Word. He is the sword of the Spirit. The rosary directs our attention away from what we have to say and towards Him. Typically, it is prayed by Catholics, but many Protestants uh, have gradually uh, be getting into uh, gradually getting into uh, this type of prayer as well. So, uh, the Rosary is a powerful prayer, and we need to um, get into it. Uh, sometimes people ask, why why do we pray to the saints? Why 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 do we waste our time? In the first place. Praying to the saints is not worship. Praying means to ask, to make a request, to ask for something. If you have been conversant with the battle of Lepanto, that's the next miracle of the rosary. The battle of Lepanto is a remarkable battle, often referenced in military history. How the Turks, the Muslim Turks, who believe that they were very sure of victory, possessing an overwhelming number of soldiers, and were very sure they were going to be capable of defeating about 5,000 uh, Catholics, uh, because their number, well, they, were over, they overwhelmed the Catholics in number, uh, they overwhelmed them in military strength, and so they were very sure of victory. But what did the Catholics do? What did they do? We're talking about um, a country, a small country known as Austria, 
um, they had to invoke a lady, they had to carry out a rosary procession, be also carrying the, a banner on which the holy name of Mary was written. And after that rosary procession, the battle started, and surprisingly and miraculously, uh, the overwhelmed the small number of Catholic soldiers, about 5,000 of them, became victorious over a heavenly armed over 30 something thousand a Turkish army that had the largest and strongest navy in the world as at that time. It was a, a real victory, and it was because of this victory uh, that the Feast of the Holy Rosary was eventually instituted. And according to the Austrian Senate, they, they produced a plate uh, that neither guns nor bullets, but many of the rosary uh, gave us the victory. The rosary is so powerful that it has done wonders in the history of the church and in the history of the world, the history of Catholicism. Whenever it is invoked, whenever it will come out, especially in public, to say the rosary, whenever it will come out in public to say the rosary, calling on Our Lady to come to our aid, whenever the church has a great need to, uh, I'll tell you something that happened, a miracle that took place in a, a diocese where um, I happened to be. Within that period, people could tra have the travel from one location to another without attacks, without kidnap, without um, all sorts of things, especially against the clergy and religious. Uh, the reigning bishop as at that time had to call for a rosary procession, a public rosary procession, uh, which was done in church on a weekly basis. And within a month, all the attacks ceased. Within a month, all the attacks stopped. And uh, that was how that issue, that problem was brought under control and stopped. And the people were able to go about freely, go about their daily duty freely, uh, without uh, molestation, without fear of being attacked, without fear of being troubled by uh, crooks and criminals uh, who have been going about uh, causing problems. So the rosary is powerful and efficacious, and we need to um, call upon people, especially in these troubled times, uh, when the church um, is in the middle of a crisis, in these times when the world is in a mood of rebellion against God. The Rosary saved an entire squadron during the Second World War. And how did this happen? It was May 1940, and we joined the Air Force in late September. We were grouped in squadrons. About 30 to 50 men made up of a squadron along the squadron with the squadron leader who gave all the orders and kept us functioning in unity. They told us that we were going overseas and we'll be in action right away. We eagerly awaited our new squadron leader. As an officer, he would, we believed, go straight to the officer's quarters. However, the squadron leader, Mr. Fulton, in full uniform, headed for our bunkhouse, where he settled with the rest of us. He drew his bag uh, on an upper bunk. Our squadron leader, an officer, sleeping here with us. We liked him at once. And our liking and our admiration grew each day. The first night he knelt on the floor and prayed his rosary in silence. As standard, we were struck dumb. When he finished, he looked at us with his friendly smile and said, I hope you guys don't mind the fellow saying some prayers because we are because where we are going, we are going to need them. Next night he repeated his prayer session, although 
our group have been together for six months at least. I have never seen anyone kneel in prayer. I had no idea that any of our group was Catholic. The third night, three of our companions joined Fulton in saying the rosary. The rest of us did not understand, but we kept a respectful silence. We were in slow, however, on the pickup. So soon, we were all answering the Hail Marys and our fathers. So we ended each day in prayer. Shortly enough, we were to begin a series of night trains from England over Germany. The evening before, Fulton gave each of us a rosary. We shall be in some nice, tight situations. Uh, but if you agree to keep the rosary with you and to say it, I promise you that our lady will bring you all back safe. Sure thing, we reply. Little thinking we will be in action for four years, often in dreadful danger, and sometimes Fulton's voice will ring through each plane, Hail Mary. And we will devoutly respond. We must have said hundreds of rosaries in the skies. Ours was the only squadron that had not lost a plane or a single life. We said nothing, but we treasured our secret weapon. We did survive or returned to Canada in 1945, fully convinced that Our Lady had taken care of us. So I never forget to keep my rosary with me and say it every day, although I am not Catholic. When I change, when I change my trousers, the first thing I transfer, even before my wallet, is the rosary. So uh, this is an astounding testimony of a, a military man who have um, experienced the power of saying uh, the rosary. Protection in extreme situation. There are so many testimonies. During the 1994 Rwandan genocide, um, some of the people who were there, you know, by 1990, for about 91, they stayed hidden and cramped in the bathroom of a local pastor. Um, they were praying the rosary. A lady spared them from being slaughtered during the genocide. And, uh, you know, that genocide took millions of life. So, um, Valentine, a certain Valentine was driving through um, Imo State in Nigeria in 2020, uh, the way to his father's funeral. He was ambushed by four armed men. The priest was unexpectedly um, Respectively, uh, 36, arrived 36 hours later, reporting his release to his religious superior, Father Valentine Izago, said the abductors had let him go after seeing him pray the rosary. Speaking to aid the church in need, Father George Okuri, Superior General of the Congregation of the Sons of Mary, Mother of Mercy, said, when I spoke to Father Valentine, he told me that seeing him pray the rosary made the abductors confused. They started having a guilty conscience. It made them realize uh, that since he was wearing a cassock, they had not got the right person. So they gave him some food and released him. The rosary has led to miraculous cures. Uh, Father Patrick Payton, the famous rosary priest, um, in 1938, after he had emigrated to the U.S. from England, he became very ill and was diagnosed with advanced tuberculosis, an incurable condition at the time. His sister suggested to him to turn to a lady. The future of Father Pitin consecrated himself to Mary and began devoutly to recite the rosary. At the astonishment of his doctors, he was completely and miraculously cured. In gratitude, he promised Mary that he would spend his life promoting the rosary. On becoming a priest, he coined the phrase, the family that prays the rosary stays together. Many of you have heard this phrase before, but you never knew um, how it came about. The author of that, pray, uh, that phrase is Father Patrick Peterman. 
He was one of the pioneering television evangelists who used the medium to promote the Holy Rosary. In 1992, he died peacefully with the rosary beads in his hands. His cause for canonization is underway. It's underway and it's very likely um, he is going to uh, make it very, very likely. So the rosary is very powerful. It has worked wonders. It has not souls from the evil one. We'll take uh, the last testimony we are going to take before we proceed, the conversion of a satanist. Um, Ascension Press recounts the story of a certain man named Longo, a satanist whose cause for canonization, you can imagine that, is well underway. He was born in 1841 as a devout Catholic in a devout Catholic family. And during this period, there was a strong nationalist movement in Italy, uh, much anti-clericalism. Uh, many of his colleagues, professors, were ex-priests who had a negative view of the Catholic Church. He started to babble in occult and eventually uh, became a satanist. He was consecrated as a satanic priest and promised his soul to the demon. To his family's dismay, he preached against the Catholic faith and uh, presided over blasphemous rituals. His mental and physical health deteriorated and he sought help from a Dominican priest. He sought help from a third other Dominican, uh, but he was still plagued with guilt about his past life. In particular, he promised his soul to a demon. He doubted that God would forgive him. These thoughts merely proved, uh, it proved him, you know, uh, drove him to suicide. But then he remembered the homily he had had on the power of the rosary. Uh, as it was written, he said, Falling to my knees, I exclaim, if your words are true, that he who propagates your rosary will be saved. I shall read salvation because I shall not leave this earth without propagating your rosary. He spent the rest of his life promoting this prayer and build the Basilica of Our Lady of the Rosary. So there you go, my dear listener. Um, you can see how powerful uh, this prayer is and the great need we have to um, have recourse to it. It is not a question of stories. This month in October is the month dedicated uh, to the rosary. So we are called to embrace it and to say it daily. Say it daily, say it on a regular basis. Let us take quickly a message for the pressure blood given on the 16th March 1997 and see how this connects with the rosary. During our adoration prayer with Mass, I saw a lost fashion on Calvary. He was being striped naked. Then they straightened him on the cross and uh, started nailing him. He cried out in a loud voice. Immediately there was a large cloud which covered the whole place. Then the sacred dead appeared and the Lord said, My loving children, listen and understand these words. I chose you so that you may live a monastic life. I set you apart for a great work which is hidden in the sight of the world. Through your prayers, mercy shall be granted to humanity, and through your love for one another, people will learn to live at peace with one another. I told you to take away all the burden of hatred and make peace with everyone. If you do, you will gain their souls for heaven. I say to you, you must complete your lives with holiness so that you will not lose your souls and other souls. Take out all the evil fruits then germinate and grow like a healthy plant, which will be a home of rest for all birds and animals. As they will eat his fruits and grow fat and strong. My children, I warn you never to let any of you become unspiritual like Esau. Never let your attitude reach the plan of heaven for the salvation of humanity. If you do, your lives on earth will gain nothing like Esau's. Some will harden their hearts not to some will harden their hearts not to hear all my orders and become lost forever. 
It will happen to you as it happened to the Israelites on Mount Sinai. Those who refuse to hear from the one I gave divine message on earth, they will tremble and shake with fear. When I come to them with my terrifying voice, about the time will be too late to save souls during the hour, minute, during the hour, a minute, it will be over and the seconds will be over as well. My children, I make this call to be holy, to be a holy call for you. The land you walk is holy. It's a holy land, a home for the home of rest in the hour of disaster. The heavenly Jerusalem surrendered by thousands of angels. Heaven celebrates daily the feast of the firstborn son of God on that holy land with promises not better things than the blood of Abel. The land is holy, you must keep it holy. When the time comes, you will mount a complete crucifix on that land. I promise to heal any person that stands on that land. I will answer all their requests. Whenever you come there, console me about my precious blood, make preparation. Pray the chaplet of my precious blood immediately after your rosary and consecrate yourselves to my precious blood. Let me repeat that again. Pray the chaplet of my precious blood immediately after your rosary and consecrate yourself to my precious blood. Make daily sacrifice for the sins of the whole world and pray them and pray for them. Pray for all whom I told you to pray for. Obey all my orders. You will not escape my punishment. He who fails to listen to my orders, the mighty wind will blow the person away. There will be a great destruction. The heavens as well as the earth will shake and make a great noise. All the evil will be destroyed. Only the good will remain. Any person who survives the great chastisement has power to live with the Son of God and govern with him for the years to come. There will be no life for those who lose. They will be lost forever. My children, why can't you not hear these words and worship God in harmony? Read Psalm 130. I say to you, O oh my loving children, to do this adoration with love and happiness. The time is coming when there will be no adoration on earth. There will be no one to celebrate Mass as worthily as the one you hear now. The whole world will cry with all their hearts to the mighty one above and find the great wrath of God for their answer. Rejoice because you are called for this great work. Rejoice for you are promised heaven and all authority belong to you as the sons of the Most High God. Practice holy lives as children of God. I'm happy to hear you praying with love and fear. My children, Come in time tomorrow, I will tell you many things about the evangelization and the meeting with your bishop. I will explain to you many things about these future events. I will also tell you more about the month of July. I am happy with all of you who try with you to obey my commands. I bless you. I have given Michael the Archangel command to guard you. Peace be with you all. Immediately the cloud shook. Then the vision passed. Precious Lord of Jesus Christ, save us and the whole world. Just two quick takeaways before we round off. First of all, it says, say the pressure blood chaplet immediately after the rosary. Don't just go into the pressure blood cha chaplet like that. The rosary, the blessed mother have said, is made for protection. Secondly, it talks about the time when there will be no mass on earth, when there will be no adoration of God on earth. And there are people who cry out in prayer and receive God's word for an answer. If you go to Pieta, you will see the promise made by a lady. One day I will save the world through the rosary and the scapula. Which day is he talking about? Is she talking about? She's talking about the period prophesied by Daniel when the daily sacrifice will be taken away. It is the daily sacrifice of the man that keeps the world. It is the daily sacrifice that provides the grace that have kept the evil one from completely taking over. But the day is coming when you will seek for the mass and find it not. And this is why we've been called to attend this regularly now because it will be for us a storage of grace. But when that time comes, the hour of your 
the world's hour of dryness. That is the period our lady is saying that one day I will save the world through the rosary and the scapula. Never let a day pass without saying your rosary. Consecrate yourself to Immaculate Heart of Mary and make the rosary your special weapon. If military men, if soldiers have been able to get protection through the rosary, if the people have been protected from a nuclear bomb on account of the rosary, what else can it not do? May God bless you as you take up this weapon and the fight against evil for protection, for destruction of vice, for growth in virtue, and permanently for the destruction of heresies as promised in the 15 promises of the rosary. And also that those who say it every day will not die without the last sacraments. These are part of the promises she gave to a Saint Dominic and Blessed Allah. May these promises become us as we embrace it on a daily basis through Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost.